The Philippine Navy reaffirmed its commitment to maintaining the reliability and operational readiness of its warships by carrying out quarterly firing drills which took place on June 18. On this occasion, Del Pilar class patrol, frigate BRP Andres Bonifacio, PS-17, participated in a routine exercise conducted off the coast of Palawan, which included firing its MK.36 SRBOC decoy launcher. The shooting exercises carried out demonstrated the level of professionalism and skill of the ship's crew in operating the weapon systems they had, including the MK.36 SRBOC decoy launcher. The successful implementation of this exercise provides a positive picture of the level of readiness and combat capability of BRP Andres Bonifacio, PS-17, in carrying out maritime security tasks in the area of its responsibility. This appears to be the first time the ship or any of its sisters fired their SRBOC decoy launchers, disabling a ship that was in service with the Philippine Navy for many years, and the ship had a launcher when the US transferred it. The PN only needs to obtain the decoy and install it on the SRBOC launcher because the system is already working when the PN receives the ship. So it's surprising that it took them years to finally take advantage of those capabilities. The Philippine Navy continues to conduct training and training for all its ship personnel to ensure that each war is ready for duty in all conditions. With routine exercises like this, it is hoped that the Philippine Navy can maintain the stability and security of the waters around Palawan and make a positive contribution in maintaining the preservation and security of the country. In a recent post by the social media page of BRP Andres Bonifacio, PS17, it has confirmed that TBE ship received its new combat management system and air surface radar, but did not mention the installation of a new hull-mounted sonar and supply and installation of a new radar electronic support measures (RESM). The post was referring to the supply and installation of a new Hanwha Systems Naval Shield (ICMS) and the installation of the Saab and SPS-77 Sea Giraffe AMB radar, which were part of Hanwha's contract under the Del Pilar class frigate upgrade project. The project allow includes the installation of Sea Fleur forward-looking infrared camera. So far there are photo evidences that the Sea Fleur and the RESM beckeve to be from Elisra. It seems that all upgrades on the ship only involve those that can be installed dockside, which does not require the use of a dry dock. The installation of the new hull-mounted sonar requires it to undergo dry dock works, which we believe would be scheduled together with the scheduled dry dock maintenance and repair works of the entire ship. In today's military news the Philippine Navy has officially announced that its offshore patrol vessel the Del Pilar class has achieved full operational capability after undergoing a comprehensive four-year overhaul during these past years the Del Pilar class has undergone significant upgrades including the integration of advanced modern sensors secondary weapon systems and combat management systems this initiative by the government aimed to bring these vessels up to par with their newer counterparts the resolve the Navy's Del Pilar class lead ship BRP Gregorio Del Pilar along with her companions BRP BRP Ramon Alcaraz PS16 and BRP Andres Bonifacio PS17 were previously part of the US Coast Guard Cutter Fleet and would have lived in With upgrade work which is still ongoing today, and because BRP Andres Bonifacio is still waiting for the complete surface air search radar system to be installed, Many are asking whether there are plans to upgrade the ship's weapon system so that it can be made more sophisticated. They are comparable to Rizal-class frigates, and the answer is yes. With the information provided to, and this is for quite some time already, there are already offers to upgrade the ship's weapon systems, including missile systems. The first offer was for the Del Pilars to have a rail-type guided missile launching system. However, it is not definite if the offered system will use a twin or single arm rail launching system like the MK-13 or the newer MK-22 which Bonds Q believes is much more appropriate to be installed on those Del Pilar class. Though the rail system belongs to an older variant of missile launching technology, it also offered versatility as its magazine can house harpoon anti-ship missiles and standard anti-air missiles, even rocket launch torpedoes, the same as vertical launching systems. MK-22 is a lighter version of the older MK-13, though it only holds 16 missiles, 
it can fit perfectly on those Del Pilar class. However, this system is only fit on those US-made missile systems. We believe this offer has been considered by the Philippine government. The only problem is, the Navy cannot afford a single Del Pilar that is out of service due to massive upgrade work. Installing the rail system means one active ship will be out for some time as installing the magazine system alone will take quite a long time to complete, time the Philippine Navy does not have as they only have a few ships available for use. Patrol Duty Another concern regarding the rail launching system is the support factor. The United States already scaled down the technical support on them but since other navies are still using this, the Philippine Navy can seek support from those countries. However, if the rail launch system is not possible for those Del Pilars, the Navy can still seek tube-launched anti-ship missiles and short-range air defense systems, the same configuration as the current Rizal-class frigates. The other offer is a total upgrade of the Del Pilar's weapon systems. Though there's no definite details that were provided for this, but we can surmise it will include missile systems, close-in weapon systems and torpedo launching systems, even adding or upgrading the ship's fire control systems. But for this to be implemented, the Philippine government needs to secure first the approval of the United States government before any third-party systems to be installed on those ships. The other offer is a total upgrade of the Del Pilar's weapon systems. Though there's no definite details that were provided for this, but we can surmise it will include missile systems, close-in weapon systems and torpedo launching systems, even adding or upgrading the ship's fire control systems. But for this to be implemented, the Philippine government needs to secure first the approval of the United States government before any third-party systems to be installed on those ships. Can the Del Pilars use Sea Star or High Siong anti-ship missiles that their Rizal class are using? Yes, they can. But as we said earlier, the notification and approval from the United States government should be granted before any third-party systems will be installed and integrated on those former Hamilton-class cutters. It's up to the Philippine Navy if they are keen on adding another type of anti-ship missile system to their inventory which is the Harpoon. Another reason why the country is seeking other systems outside the United States is the cost. The DND gives on emphasis having the needed military technology and hardware from non-traditional sources, because the cost is more reasonable for the Philippines to acquire. The Del Pilar class are tough and versatile vessels, they have patrolled Alaskan waters before where sea conditions were very rough. This frigate has ample space to upgrade and if funds are given to upgrade more, it will be more capable than the newer Rizal-class frigates. We are would not be surprised as well if the design of this ship ends up as a part of the self-reliance and defense posture project in the future.